Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Soundtrack Pro from start to finish. In this short little beginning video, we're going to go over what we're going to talk about in these upcoming video series that I'm going to be posting to YouTube. Uh, the first one we're going to do is why do we want to use Soundtrack Pro? Okay, why do we want to use Soundtrack Pro when we have Final Cut Pro? Why do we want to take the trouble to export and move things to Soundtrack Pro when Final Cut Pro has some great audio tools? We're also going to go over some audio terminology within Soundtrack Pro to help get you more familiar with some of the terminology inside of an audio application like Soundtrack Pro. Now, I am not an audio engineer. Far from it. So this is not the intended purpose of the video. It's just intended to get you familiar with Soundtrack Pro. Not to teach you the inner workings of sound design. And we're also going to go over some new features within the new Soundtrack Pro. So I hope you all stick around, buckle up, sit down, and grab something to drink. And we're going to start by answering these three questions. Well, let's start by answering the first question. Why use Soundtrack Pro? When compared to Final Cut Pro, Soundtrack Pro provides access to more tools tons more audio tools you can really get down and dirty with your audio and finally edit your audio in soundtrack pro and that comes along with greater flexibility and greater accuracy and greater power all those all those first four things kind of meld together into one item item which i guess could be described as all around greater power the flexibility and the accuracy that soundtrack Pro allows you to have compared to FCP is outstanding and if you're doing anything besides minor minor tweaking you may want to consider using Soundtrack Pro also there's a huge music library of Apple loops that Apple includes with Soundtrack Pro FCP you know suffice it to say has none but Soundtrack Pro does have a huge music library and it also has a huge library of sound effects that you can use to enhance your audio and why not the, the round tripping from Final Cut Pro to Soundtrack Pro is easy as making cherry pie there's no reason in this world why you wouldn't want to take advantage of the power of Soundtrack Pro with round tripping as easy as it is within FCP so let's answer the next question that we ask ourselves audio terminology a little bit of audio terminology there's a few definitions I'd like to go over with you here and the first one is frequency and as you can see, I have it written down there for you. It's measured in cycles. Now this is the you know the pitch of a sound. Low frequencies are low pitched and high frequencies are high pitched. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure everybody who's venturing into Soundtrack Pro has a pretty good idea of what frequencies are. Okay. Now the sample rate. The sample rate is measured in samples per second and determines the frequency response. Now for the, the, the math lovers out there, if you take the sample rate and divide it by two that will determine the maximum frequency that that sample rate will support it's called the Nyquist theorem so that's a little bit for you future you know audio engineers out there now bit depth bit depth determines the dynamic range of a clip the distance between the softest and the loudest part of a clip so you'll have a during a, an audio clip you'll have a loudest part and you'll have a softest part and the bit depth is the distance between the softest and loudest part okay levels that's the volume of a clip crossfades are dissolves between audio clips okay so kind of like the end of one will fade out and the beginning of another one will fade in okay and envelopes are where you set your keyframes I don't know why they don't call it the keyframe editor or the keyframe line I don't know why they call it envelopes because you definitely don't um, put stamps on them. So, but anyway, that's what envelopes are. They are where your keyframes are set. Okay. Let's talk about sample rates for for a second. As you can see, there's about four common sample rates: 22 kilohertz, 32 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz, and 44.1 kilohertz. I recommend 48 whenever possible. It gives you the be the the greatest range. Um, now, the 22 is usually used for speech, as you can see by the chart. The 32 is usually used for low-end cameras, 
You'll notice the 44.1 is used on audio CDs a lot and on cameras and DVDs. You're at about 48,000. So anything above really 44 kilohertz is you're not really going to be able to tell much about it because the human hearing as you can see the highest frequency is about 20,000 the lowest is 20 so I mean you know the human ear probably won't be able to tell much more much less about you know 44 48 or anything over so I recommend sticking with 48 most of the time or where that's possible um, there's a lot more to sample rates and we'll get into that this is just wanting to familiarize you with quickly with the terminology of sample rates and, and what they are if you see these numbers and stuff up there you you'll be halfway familiar with them now let's talk about bit depth there's three common bit depths 8 16 and 24 and the bit depth this tells us how many steps are between the softest point of the clip and the loudest point of the clip 8 bit has 256 steps between the softest and loudest point 16 bit has 65,000 steps and 24 bit has over 16 million steps 24 bits usually used in the theatrical setting, 16 bits audio CDs and video, and 8 bits usually the internet. So when you're in doubt, use 48 kilohertz, 16 bit depth. The last thing I want to mention in our first part from start to finish the Soundtrack Pro is waveform versus spectrum. Now the waveform shows the volume of a clip. The, wild, the wider the waveform is, the louder the volume of the clip is at that point. So wherever there's a big wide spot in a waveform editor like you see on the screen, that means that's a loud spot. If it's real skinny, it's a soft spot. But that's all you can get from a waveform. Now a spectrum editor shows frequencies contained by a clip, whereas bass at the bottom, treble at the top, and color equals intensity. So while the treble will be at the top of the spectrum, bass will be at the bottom of the spectrum, and color lets you know if there's any frequency there at all. Whereas blue, there's nothing. So all the treble at the top and where there's that blue nice blue color there's nothing there then as it goes down it gets green more intense more intense all the way down the red so the spectrum editor allows much more flexibility and and versatility and power and Final Cut Pro does not have a spectrum editor Soundtrack Pro does so this alone can be sometimes worth using Soundtrack Pro so I hope this has been a good brief introduction to the upcoming video series I have planned I hope you all stay tuned for future episodes and um, I look forward to completing them I'll try to do them as fast as I can but I won't be able to do you know one a day or anything I'll try to get one out every week if I can so uh, and you know I'm not going to be doing only these until I get completed with the series I'll be throwing other ones in there too so um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time